In our last video at the Museum of Gold of Peru and Weapons of the World, we saw probably the most amazing collection of pre-Incan gold and treasure that I've ever seen. And now we're going to head upstairs to see probably the most amazing collection of historical weapons of the world that I've ever seen. So, come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. All right, we're upstairs. I officially have 44% battery left. We're probably gonna have to film some of this on the phone, but look right here. Samurai. <laughs> we'll just start with um, what looks to be 10, 15 suits of samurai armor. Yeah, let's just, we'll start there. We'll start with what looks to be 100 katanas and other samurai weapons. The tour guide and the tour group followed us. They were right here, they were about to start with the samurai. And then I think the guy noticed that I was filming, so he, he said, hey, let's go over here and do this, start over here instead. So, if, that, if that's true, if he noticed, then that's why he did it well. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tour Guide. Man, look at these, just, <laughs> okay. Like, I, I'm not gonna get close-ups of a lot of these things because, I mean, look, there literally are, look at this, like 15 suits of samurai armor and and I don't even know how many swords. In between each one of these suits, there is a case like this that has, what, I mean, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 15, 20 swords. I mean, look at the handle on this one. So, look, we're going to get the lightning round up here in the Hall of Weapons. And suffice it to say, this video is not going to be able to do justice to this entire collection. And I'll just say it right now, and I'm probably going to say it at the end of the video, too. If you come to Lima, Peru, you absolutely have to come and see this. You have to, this is a must see. Maybe, I don't know. Look, I'm serious, like, come here. When you come to Lima, you gotta go to this place. You, you have to come. You have to come. Pay the, pay the 40 soles. 12, 12 bucks. It's, it's 100% worth it. This is, this is the coolest collection that I've seen in any museum that I've been to so far in my entire trip. I, oh, I thought this was just like one little room in the end. Look at that. It goes all the way down. Oh, it goes all the way down, and there's a whole other room back here. Guys, we are 100% going to run out of battery on this camera. Okay, lightning round. Spurs. This entire thing is spurs. We have uniforms from the Spanish Civil Guard. We have... A Spanish Caballero Cavalry uniforms stirrups the entire case cavalry stirrups more spurs more uniforms this entire room going all the way down is all just cavalry stuff stirrups spurs Saddles. Estribos chilenos. Chilean. I guess these aren't like stirrups. These are like. I don't even know. Saddlebags, maybe? 
Now this is really cool too because look at these. These are like leather, right? But they're carved leather, I think. Or or maybe they're wood. Whew, whatever they are. They're really cool and there's literally four, one, two, three, four, five cases of them. So probably five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I don't know, maybe like 600 of these things right here, just here. This guy, this guy wins for best facial hair. No, I take that back. This guy, this guy wins for best facial hair. What is this guy? General of the infantry, Spanish infantry. Now, I have been Old, or I've researched a little bit before coming here and found that I think there are actually some really famous uh, weapons and swords. Like, I think he, this dude has, like, um, you know, like, King Ferdinand of Spain, like, his sword, and, like, one of the czars of Russia. I think he has, like, a sword. So we, we got to find those before our battery runs out, because uh, I definitely want to see those. But like I said, there's just so much in here. I'm, I'm, I'm like in completely overwhelmed. Every direction I turn, there's a uniform or like a, a case. Look at this, with like saddles and cavalry drums. The Prince of Wales' own regiment of Yorkshire drum. Some more modern military uniforms here. These these aren't even labeled. I don't even know what these are. It's Peru. The medal says Peru. 1824. Now this can't be... This can't be 1824. The medal's probably from... Yeah, the Battle of Ayacucho. 1824. That's during the War of Independence. The Ayacucho, Battle of Ayacucho is like the decisive battle in the Peruvian War of Independence. But that's just a medal, I think. Like a... I think this is a modern military uniform. All right, we'll continue. Lightning round. I think these are riding bits. I'll, I'll show you. There's four cases of them. More saddles. More helmets. Guys, this is the first room. Estribos de la Plata Peruanos. Silver... Stirrups. God, these are all silver stirrups. Look at how many there are. This this collection. <laughs> Look at this. This is just like a hallway where they're just gonna have. There was more stuff in the other room back there that we even miss. Hold on. I don't even know what to do at this point. I don't know where to go next. I think we're going to come back to this. Okay, so this is the room that we passed up before to keep looking at that room with like a 10,000 stirrups. And this has muskets. So many muskets. Some of these are like flintlock, right? Like this. Okay, like a flintlock. Some of these, I think, are maybe even like... Well, I don't know. Because, you know, what pre-flintlock musket, right? You literally had, like... You would put gunpowder in the thing and then light it with something. Like a hot piece of metal or a, a, a piece of rope. They would have, like, rope that would have an ember on the end of it. That you would use to, like, light the gun. So it would shoot, but I don't think these things are that old. These are all like, these all look like flintlock muskets, right? They put a piece of flint in between there and it would strike against that metal and create a little spark, which would set off the gunpowder. More flintlock muskets. Okay, we gotta, uh, we honestly have to speed our way through this. Ooh, look at these, some of these very intricate, like, little flintlock pistols. Look at this thing, it has all these ins, inlaid, inset. Huh. 
And the flint, look at the, the flintlock mechanism. It's all like carved. Look at this one. This is, has like some sort of seashell situation. This is like, y you had to be, you were a really important, very rich dude if you had one of these things. This isn't just like the thing that they issue to like average soldier. That's like some real serious rich guy shit. Got a few, <laughs> snuck a few Japanese swords in here to go with these Japanese rifles. Yeah, okay, so this, right? This is like, if I, th if I think correctly, they would have in that uh, like metal piece that's on the hinge, they would have like a, a piece of rope that was burning, so it had an ember on the end of it. And when you pull the trigger, it would like push, it would stick the, like it would move the hinge and the thing would come down, the rope would hit the gunpowder. Have a old revolver. Japanese, I think? No. Albania? Rifle of Albania de Montenegro. Or well, I guess this is Marifle de Albania o de Montenegro. So it's either Albania or Montenegro, we're not sure. I'm I'm blown away by this collection. Escopeta, cabile. That's a escopeta means shotgun. Rifles. Mauser. <laughs> Mauser pistol. So these Mauser pistols, this is like one of the first uh, semi automatic pistol designs. And you could get it with this like rifle butt on the back of it. It's pretty wild. Swords. More muskets. These are Hindu. Indian, Indian muskets. Of course, as we're going around the outside here, there's all this stuff in these cases in the middle that we're just skipping right over. Oh, and go figure. Look, there's another like two or three rooms down at the back here. This collection, I, <laughs> this collection is wild. Yo, look at this thing. Arabian scimitars from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Okay. Wow. Look, I think it's pretty clear by now. You're not going to get to see really everything up close and in detail here in this video. This is really just a teaser trailer for why when you come here to Lima, Peru, if you ever do, you should spend the 40 soles and come check this place out and see all of this stuff for yourself. Because honestly, you really can only get so much out of a video with some dumb gringo walking around talking and squeaking his shoes through this museum. You're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to come here yourself. Okay, look at this. Chinese swords, espadas y punales, punales, chinos, from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. Whew. Wild. Look at these. That's the thing with this collection. I mean, downstairs it's all gold, you know, ink and pre ink and South America mostly, right? But up here, he's got stuff from all over the place up here China, Arabian Peninsula. He's got stuff from Europe. All different, different like centuries. He's got stuff from the 16th century, the 1500s, all the way up to like modern 
stuff that like Mauser pistol over there. Jeez. And of course, this is one room. Oh, look at this. Look at this motherfucking golden child Eddie Murphy looking. Holy shit. Okay, look, we're moving on. We're getting down to like 35% battery. I don't even know how I'm going to edit all of this together. We might have to make a two-parter. I've made two-parter videos before, but not because we were in like one place, one museum, and the collection was so extensive that we just had to make a two-parter. What am I even looking at while I'm rambling on here? Indian Hacha Daga Indu. Armas que pernecieron al nizan de Hyderabad, India, 1948 to 56. Look at this rifle. This is like, he's got the entire thing in a case with like the the like shield and the and the, the straps and the, the little thing you know like which probably had oil in it to keep the thing you know maintained he's got all the he's got ammo for it and everything this is like wow it's like a complete set he's got another one over here this is wild look at these swords look at this look at the, the hilt on this uh, whatever this thing is Look at the hilt. It's got like a giant emerald in it. This is, I'm, I'm seriously blown away. Like I said, there's a whole other room back here, two rooms. Okay, we're in the hat and helmet room. A hat from the, a soldier of Estonia from oh, 1991. So this is like even modern. Yeah, I mean, this is a like, modern helmet. So he really has everything from, from all the way back to, like, uh, here, the Marine Infantry Helmet from Communist China, 1979. He's got all the old stuff, but he's got all the new stuff, too. All these, what are these, flare guns? I, 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 are these all flare? These are flare guns. Okay, so, yeah, there you go. He has a collection of about 40 flare guns from different, different eras. Whew. Look, when I came here, I was told that this was an extensive collection. But I had no idea what I was getting into. More helmets. Medic's helmet. Military police helmet. This is like some World 20, that's like some World War One era, I think. Helmets. He's got pilots, flight helmets. Yo. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, our battery is gonna die. Right, this is gonna completely die. We're gonna have to get out the phone and start filming on the phone. Um, we're, we're definitely running out, we're definitely out of battery very soon. It's more like ammunition and shells and stuff. We're not even in the last room. There's a whole other room. Look at this. And this room, it goes all the way down into two more rooms. How, 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 revolvers, Smith and Wesson Russian revolvers, shotguns, Rifles, rifles with like revolvers, revolver uh, chambers. 
little tiny Colt Derringer one shot little pistols little semi auto little tiny semi auto pistol captured during the conflict uh, with Ecuador Peru and Ecuador I guess 1941 this is like some old west wild west stuff right here Remington Army 1865 revolver Oh yeah, 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 look at this collection. Guys, this is, this is wild. Oh yeah, if you hadn't seen enough revolvers already, here's, here's a case that just has, I don't know how many revolvers in it. All right, look. Honestly, we're like completely out of battery in the camera, so uh, I'm shutting it off. We're going to film with our phone. Okay, we're on the phone now, and uh, if we run out of battery on the phone, then I don't know what we're going to do. Bolt action rifles. Here, bolt action rifles from, I don't even know when, swords? more knives and swords and swords and flintlock old style flintlocky pistols crazy okay look at this crazy thing oh yeah yeah that is a very dangerous looking knife Swords, cavalry swords, revolvers. Here's the double barrel shotgun case, apparently. Of course, we're going around again, around the outside, and there's all kinds of cases of stuff in the middle here, which I am literally just going to skip. It's it's knives and swords and I, I don't know I don't know I can't I can't film everything can I be here forever this video is already literally going to be like multiple hours long if I include all the stuff that we filmed Jeez, this is wild you know we're downstairs filming all that gold and thinking wow. Got to make sure we save enough battery so that we can film upstairs, too. <laughs> there was no way. There was no way. There was no way we were going to have enough to film upstairs and downstairs. Okay, here we go. Some North American Wild West rifles. This is some, this is some Red Dead Redemption shit right here. Colt. That that one's crazy. It's got that uh like a So, I think this was like they you could use that to make your own uh um like ball. This is would be a ball that you would shake you would put powder into, right? So you'd have to like load each one with an individual ball. It's not a cartridge. It's like a pre-cartridge revolver and then this one has like pre-made cartridges. Right? I wonder if the sound is coming through on this. I've, I honestly don't ever record on my phone, so I don't know if the, how much of the sound is coming through and how, how good the sound quality is going to be on any of this, but uh, what the heck is this gigantic thing? Mauser 13 millimeter anti-tank rifle from World War One. Okay, cool. So just get behind that thing and shoot a hole in the tank. Yeah. Of course, that's you know, as you as you do during World War One. There's some more of those Mausers with the like 
weird rifle butt attached to it. Here's another pistol with a rifle butt. You know, as you do. More revolvers. Gunpowder horns. More rifles. More pistols. More, 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 more. Jeez. All right, well, let's go to the next room. Okay, so there's some more rifles, bolt action, various bolt action rifles, more swords. Look at this big crazy thing. Seventeenth century English. Giant is basically just like a gigantic brass tube, a blunderbuss. Stuff a bunch of like I don't know, whatever you can find. Light that thing off. That's some that's some like uh pirates of the Caribbean shit right there. Okay, hold on. These, these look famous. Miguel Grau. Look at this. Guys, Miguel Grau. This is his pistol. Miguel Grau. If you've, uh, wait a minute, this is all like Miguel Grau medals and stuff. Look, uh, if you saw our video on the war in the Pacific, You'll know all about Miguel Grau. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that video. Link in the description. And then our guy here, Francisco Bolognese. Also, same video, War of the Pacific. These are like the two greatest heroes of the War of the Pacific. And this is his pistol. I wonder if this is... Wait a minute. So, okay. Tengo... See, look. Uh, right there, tengo, tengo deberes sagrados que cumplir y los cumple, cumpliré hasta quemar el último cartridge. I have a sacred duty to fulfill and I will fulfill it until the last cartridge. And then there's that big painting in the museum that we saw of him holding his gun right, right before he got cracked in the head from behind and died. I wonder if this is the actual pistol. Could it be? Could this be the actual pistol? Uh, this is where we came in. Yeah, this is this is where we came in. We came in, we talked to that nice woman right over there. Gatling gun. Yeah, this is the Gatling battery gun. This is like an actual, <laughs> actual Gatling gun. People always refer to any kind of gun like this as a Gatling gun, but this is the actual one made by some dude named Gatling. Imagine inventing this thing and being like, I'm going to name it after myself. Pretty wild. It's the uniform room. Uniforms. The entire way around. Uniforms. With pocket watches and swords and another case full of pistols. Look at this. President of the Republic and Generalissimo. Trujillo, Trujillo Malina. Hello, Chileno, Manuel 
Bajerano from the War of the Pacific. These are all like these are all I mean this isn't just <laughs> it's Jose Bosa. He was the former president of Peru. Uh These are like not just not just handguns. These are like the handguns of like the president, presidents and famous generals. Guillermo Billinghurst. President, former president. Manuel Belgrano. Jose Pardo. Andres Adelido Caceres. This is like, he basically has a ceremonial handgun from like every president and important general in like all of Peruvian history and some, some Chilenos too. Manuel Bacadeno. Manuel Prado's rifle or shotgun. Yeah, shotgun. Billinghurst's rifle. Presidente Agustin Gramara. Juan Crisotomo. Crisos Tomo Torico, Presidente de Peru. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got basically everything, like every, every president of Peru, and then some other famous non Peruvians. He just went out and bought all their guns. General Miguel Iglesias, Pacificador de Peru, President of Provisional Peru. Oh, look at this crazy thing. Pepper blocks, uh, revolver. Mariscal Oscar Benavides, Presidente de Peru. It's got a uniform here. Simon, whoa, okay, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Is this, is this? <laughs> oh no! Wait, 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 wait! Is this the is this actually Simon Bolivar's uniform? Is that what I'm looking at here? This is very potentially Simon Bolivar's uniform. Okay, we're just moving on. I wonder if the guy if he has any like Jose de San Martin stuff here. I mean, he's got Simon Bolivar's uniform. Chances are he's probably got something from Jose de San Martin up in here, right? It's got everything else. Walter P30, PK38. That, oh, yeah, uh, Marshal von Runsted. Yeah, okay, that's the, one of Hitler's field marshals. There, he's got that thing, okay. Interesting. Here's a sword that... Uh, Belong to, oh, Hermann Garing. Yeah, okay, so he has Hermann Garing's sword. Uh huh, yep. Lieutenant General uh, Alejandro Augustin Lanus, President of Argentina. There you go. There's the President of Argentina's rifle. Got a uh, pistol belonging to President of Peru, Nicolas de Pierola. What was this? Peruvian Army. Uh, uniform of Vice Admiral Juan Francisco Torres Matos, member of the military junta of Peru, 1963. And his rifle there apparently too. Suit of uh, a Prince of Hungary. 
the first king, Esteban the first of Hungary, and Carlos the fourth of Hungary. Okay, so he has a uh, suit that was worn by the king of Hungary. Yep, that that checks out. The this is uh, you know he had all these uniforms out there, right? That were like. Oh, look at this. This is a typical, you know, uniform from some military. And then in here, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I have, like, the uniforms for that presidents and generals wore. Yeah, I just, I just decided to buy their uniform, you know. Mostly Peru, but not just Peru. And you got Hermann Goring's sword over there. So, oh, yeah, more Peruvian generals. Admirals, General of the Air Force. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Manuel Elias Bonemaison, el último sobreviviente del Huascar. This is the last survivor of the Huascar, the monitor, the Ironsides monitor commanded by uh, Miguel Garau. We talked about it in our video about the war in the Pacific. There is his uniform. Look at that. Okay, cool. Let's do that here. Yeah, more vice admirals and vice admirals and generals and even more. There is some really famous people's stuff in here. And we walk past a lot of the stuff. Fuerza Ariad del Peru, Hector Sanchez. It's his knife. Can you imagine your president of Peru? Every president of Peru going back like 200 years? <laughs> Little did they all know that eventually all their shit was going to end up right here. Right here. And I was going to come through and film it with my phone. Stuff, my Manuel Prado. I don't want to miss anything. I mean, these are all like presidents of Peru, which is important, but like... Oh, here we go. Here's a non-Peruvian. Uh, President of the Republic of Chile. Manuel Montt. Makarov. A present from Fidel Castro to Lieutenant General of the Peruvian Air Force. There you go. There is your gun. Here you go. Happy birthday. It's from Fidel Castro. Oh. Ramon Castilla. So this guy, president of Peru during the uh, period of Iguano era, when uh, Peru was making a huge bank off of selling bird poop. Did we look at all this stuff? This is the thing is, I don't even know if we looked at all of this stuff yet or not. Did I like skip over some stuff and maybe I'm like, just walking through here, some super important person, their, their gun is here, you know? I mean, we almost just walked right past Simon Bolivar's uniform. Yo, that's the thing with this collection like this. I'm afraid I'm literally going to walk past something, like, incredibly, incredibly important that belonged to some super famous person. Okay. Look, I think we gotta call it here. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> there may be more stuff to see, and I, honestly, we may have we may have missed some stuff in here. Okay, we might have we might have missed some stuff, but let's be honest. Like I said, this video is not for you to be able to see everything that's in here. A lot of this stuff is gonna get edited out. This video is really just like a teaser to make you want to actually come here to this museum. And I think you should. I mean, we went through all the battery on our camera and now we're filming on our phone. I think that's 
gonna be it. Which is in my gonna say? Alright, we're back outside. We're outside, we're filming on our phone. We burned through the entire battery on our camera. Um, I, I, I have no words, except for the like two hours worth of words that I just spewed out of my mouth inside that museum. This is, this is the coolest museum that I have been to in my entire travel, all my travels here in South America, all through Argentina, Santiago, in Chile, here in Lima, that's wild. That's wild. Go to this place here. Get a one last shot of it on our phone here. Believe Museo del Oro y Armas del Mundo, the Museum of Gold of Peru and the Weapons of the World. Come to this place. This is this is really really cool. All right. Well, what do we say about that? Probably not all of this is going to make it into the, the video. We might make it a two-parter because there's just so much to see in there. I don't know if people would be would want to see two videos worth of me just being like, oh look, you know, look at all this gold, look at that president's gun. But I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, hopefully you did too. So this is either one video or it's two videos. But either way, I hope you enjoyed one or two videos here. And uh, we'll see you next time.